Hello friends! We live in a time when successful and influential people can afford to experience all the joys of life, supposedly. Oftentimes these famous politicians, actors, and athletes are the faces of charitable projects and many foundations are named after them. However, they themselves spend their days on luxury yachts and resorts, wear designer clothes, and drive cool cars. All this to say that they have no intention of denying themselves a wealthy lifestyle. Today, we will talk about a successful soccer player and the holder of the coolest Senegalese title. His large fortune could have enabled him to lead a carefree life with at least a hundred cars and a couple of personal jets. However, as you probably already guessed, he chose to go another way and remain a selfless patriot of his homeland. The hero of our story today is a barefoot boy named Sadio. He was born on April 10, 1992 and spent his childhood in a typical African village of Bambali, which was full of dilapidated houses and barefoot children. Sadio's family was huge, which resulted in 10 people having to live in one small house without electricity and other amenities. As you might have already guessed, there was not enough food for everyone. In short, the main family was poor. When Sadio was just 11 years old, the family's main breadwinner passed away, which further exacerbated their situation. Soon afterwards, instead of studying, Maine had to start working in the fields, growing sugar and rice. Whenever the boy had free time, he would play soccer with the local boys using a homemade ball made out of rags. Of course, life was not easy, but even despite the poverty that surrounded him, the boy had big dreams. Little Sadio was crazy about soccer. At night, when looking up at the starry sky, he dreamt of one day becoming famous and pulling his family out of poverty. His mom and uncle, however, did not share the boy's enthusiasm and tried to prevent him from playing. They believed that a boy from a forgotten village had no chance of making it as a soccer player and that it was best for him to plan on doing something realistic with his life. The family's opinion began to change when at the 2002 World Cup, the Senegalese national team made it to the quarterfinals. At that point, Senegal began to be considered a major player in the world of soccer, and Maine's mother had no choice but to let her 10-year-old boy go to the soccer capital of the country. But how could he go on such a trip without money? It was definitely a risky adventure. Maine found accommodations with the family he hardly knew, to whom he offered money and revealed his grandiose plan of becoming a professional soccer player. When the boy went to tryouts at the soccer academy, he saw so many qualified boys who also wanted to make the team that he lost some confidence and belief in his own uniqueness. The situation was aggravated by the elderly coach who said something about the boy's boots and non-athletic shorts. Can you believe that Maine actually went to tryouts in boots? But when little Sadio came onto the field, the coach's opinion definitely changed. He was very fast and his movements with the ball looked like a dance. After the tryouts, the coach let Maine join the team, but it took the boy several months to truly demonstrate his talent. Throughout his time at the soccer academy, Maine's mom and uncle sent him what little money they could spare from his housing and food. The coach also helped the poor boy as much as he could. Soon, Maine paid them all back in full. The boy trained very hard, as if the soccer ball was the only thing that mattered in the world. Several years passed in such a way, all that Maine knew were soccer practice and the soccer field. The boy's zeal and dedication made the French scouts pay attention to him, and he soon signed a contract with the Mets club. Till the very last moment, he hid this news from his family, and they didn't fully believe what was happening until they saw their boy on TV. At that moment, Maine's incredible soccer career took off. At its most successful stage, he played for Liverpool. In addition to an impressive career, Maine's family had another important reason to be proud of him. Everyone knows Maine as a professional soccer player, but many also know about his genuine efforts to help the poor. Maine is a religious person. He prays several times a day and behaves modestly in ways that are not typically associated with professional athletes. You might be surprised, but Maine believes that his duty is to share everything that comes to him, which is a lot. His salary at Liverpool was $293,000 per week, which equals to $15.5 million a year. What's interesting is that Maine uses this money to help people. The athlete doesn't drive expensive cars, buy designer clothes or Rolex watches. He doesn't have a villa or a yacht. 
many people began to talk about Maine when, before a game, cameras caught an interesting shot of him holding an iPhone 11 with a broken screen. Judging by the looks of the phone, it should have been replaced long ago. Actually, Maine was the only player who did not sport the latest gadgets, even though he had enough money to buy 350 new iPhones per week. Maine believes that buying a new car or watch will not make the world better and prefers to spend his money wisely. After Maine began to receive stable income, one of his first projects was building schools and soccer fields in his native village of Bambali. He did this because he knew firsthand what it was like not to have the opportunity to go to school and do after-school activities. Maine hoped that teenagers would not want to stay in their village if they had all the conditions to build successful athletic careers there. Later, journalists found out that for years, Maine has been sending each family in his village $100 per month, simply to help them eat and live well. There are more than 100 families in his village. Maine also provides the village with medicine, clothes, and shoes. He believes that the money he sends will not encourage the people to become completely dependent on him, but at the same time, it will prevent them from going hungry, as he himself did as a child. It's important to note that it's not unusual for people in Senegal to live on less than $1 a day. The fact that the locals were very proud of Maine is apparent from the moment you step foot at Dakar Airport, where you are greeted by a banner of smiling Maine. He is always featured in local advertising, appearing on billboards, soda cans, and yogurt containers. Another example of Maine caring for his country took place after the breakout of the COVID-19 pandemic. According to Senegal's National Medical Commission, Maine donated huge amounts of money to build new hospitals, buy ventilators, and treat those in need. The world is still amazed by how Maine managed to keep his humility after his dizzying triumph at Liverpool. Money and fame did not cloud his mind, and his actions show just how important it is to remain a selfless person. Recently, footage appeared online in which the famous athlete was cleaning a mosque's toilet with his friend. Maine explained the incident by saying that he once met his good friend at a mosque and invited him for tea after the prayer. His friend said that he wasn't going to come because he needed to clean the mosque's toilets, at which point Maine suggested that they both do the work together. Somebody filmed them and Maine asked for the video not to be posted online, which the person filming swore he wouldn't do. Nevertheless, the next day the video was uploaded. Maine, however, did not think that it was a big deal. He didn't mind hard work because he spent his childhood working in the fields of his village and continued to do so during every vacation he spends at home. In his interview, Maine expressed just how highly he values helping people, which made many viewers stop for a moment and think about the meaning of life. There have been many similar instances in Maine's life, but he doesn't attach too much importance to them. And of course, not all of them end up online. For example, once when getting off the bus with his team, Maine noticed a worker who was unloading large water bottles and unlike his teammates, stopped to help the man. In addition, he bought several houses for families in Senegal, paid for more than 30 children's surgeries, and a lot of other things that only the soccer player himself knows about. As for Maine's famous iPhone, it turned out that he didn't even buy it for himself. It was actually a gift from his teammate, Giorgino Wildedam, who gave it to him to stop everyone's laughing at Maine for walking around with an old phone. Maine has another expensive gadget. After winning the Champions League, the club gave all the players an iPhone XS with 24 carats of gold. But of course, Maine doesn't use it. In an interview with the Ghanaian newspaper, the athlete explained why he doesn't need watches or cars. Why would I want 10 Ferraris, 20 diamond watches, or two planes? What will these objects do for me and for the world? I was hungry and I had to work in the field. I survived hard times, played football barefoot. I did not have an education and many other things. But today, with what I earned thanks to football, I can help my people. I built schools, a stadium. We provide clothes, shoes, and food for people who are in extreme poverty. I do not need to display luxury cars, luxury homes, trips, and even planes. I prefer that my people receive a little of what life has given me. Main story teaches us not to look at life materialistically, but to find happiness in the small things, and whenever possible, help those in need. This is a man who climbed his way up to the very top, and who, unlike many of us, once had nothing in his life except for soccer. 
Mayne held on to hope, which kept him going until he achieved the desired results. When he did finally achieve success, he remained the same humble guy who lives simply and gives to those in need a part of what he earns and also a part of himself. Friends, what do you think of the story of Senegal's most famous man? Be sure to share your opinions in the comments. That's all for today. Rate the video if you liked it. And see you soon. Bye. See you soon.